Welcome to Lecture 9 on Reusable Objects. The objectives of this lecture are subclassing, visual attributes and property classes, object groups and object libraries, and how to create a template form, what it is, what it's used for. Now, object subclassing, this is the most important topic in this uh, lecture. This is a way to create an object that inherits its functionality and appearance from another object. Subclassing objects maintain a link to their source object. They automatically inherit any changes that have been made to the source object whenever you open or recompile the form module that contains a subclass object, it will change its properties to match those to the object which it is subclassed from. This is this gives you a tremendous benefit to programming because what this means is if you have a, a standard style that you are using across a number of different forms and it's a style that changes or let's say you work in a bank that keeps buying other banks and merging then some of these uh, styles and looks and feels of your standard forms are going to change so what you can do by subclassing is that the objects maintain a link to their parent object in another form and when you recompile the object it will automatically change of course there are a lot of other things that can happen it may you know let's say all of a sudden it brings everything to a font 20 that would be bad so you have to um, watch what you're doing and make sure that it makes sense and that you use it you know at the appropriate time so what this does is it gives you a chance to reuse code. And reusable code makes development a lot easier and a lot faster. Because what it means is that you do not have to rewrite code. The more times you're rewriting the same code, the more chance that you have, one, to make mistakes, and another, if small changes are made in the database, you have to go through so many forms and change them, it becomes a huge task. So what you need to do is plan an organized strategy before you create a forms application to maximize forms ability to, to reuse the code. And, and what we're going to go over uh, in this chapter and in the next two chapters a number of the different um, methods that you have to reusing code and this will this is something that you have to strategize early on in developing your application so you know how to take um, those methods and make use of them throughout your form application so that you don't have to keep rewriting little chunks and so that your code is localized so you only have to change it in one place and then it propagates to the other items, the other objects which are subclassed. So by subclassing it allows you to create an independent subclass of any object. It automatically propagates these changes made to the source object to each of the subclass objects, and it overrides the subclass object's properties and structure. So this is, uh, this, this really saves a lot of work, so it's a good thing to make use of. The easiest way to do it is to open two forms, um, open the form that has the parent object in it, and just drag and drop the source from the target, uh, from the source object to the target form, and you'll get prompted with this, this dialog box. And you remember in the demonstrations uh, on the object navigator in the previous chapter, we, we were playing with just you know, how, the basic ways to make use of the object navigator, and we got this. So when you, get, when you drag and drop an object from a source, a source object to its target form, you're going to be prompted with this dialog box that says, do you want to copy the object or subclass it? So if you want to subclass it, of course, you should select subclass. If you copy it, you're just making a new copy and it has no relationship to the source object. Of course, there are times when you may want to do that, so uh, you can just be aware that, that you have those two choices. But for the purposes of what we're covering in this chapter, you would always choose subclass. Now, what happens when you subclass an object is on the object navigator, you'll see the subclass icon which is this little red arrow which has been added to the node. Now even if you go ahead and make changes to, like in this case, the main window, if you were to make changes to the properties, you would not see anything change on that red arrow. It would still stay as a red arrow. So that's a good thing for you to keep in mind. You cannot see from that point whether you've gone ahead and overridden 
some of the subclassing or not. But in the property palette, you do have icons on every single property. And this is very important for you to keep aware of. You have the, the regular little dot, which is the default value. That's what you see most of the time. Now, once you've subclassed an object um, or used a property class or a visual attribute, which we're going to go over uh, in just a few minutes in this chapter, uh, it'll have an inherited value. And when you see that little uh, hooked red arrow, that shows that it has an inherited value. And when you just see this green box, that means that you've just you've manually changed the default value, so it's not the default value. And then when you have the uh, the arrow with the X, that's that you have inherited a value, but then you've gone ahead and overridden it. Why is that important? Uh, this is important because you can also go back to the value of the inherited value, and now it makes a little bit more sense. When we went over those different buttons in the property palette, we had an inherit button, and what if you select a property and press the inherit button, then that X will go away. It'll go back to the inherited value. So also, um, the, if, if you do it on a green square button, the change from default, it'll go back to the default. So if you look at it this way, if you were to use that inherit button on any of the lower two, it would move them to their corresponding you know, uh, states of the upper two. Now, a visual attribute is another thing that you can create. And you can either do this, um, you can do this locally to that specific form. And a visual attribute contains all the properties that determine visual attributes, right? Font, color, that kind of thing. Now, uh, you also have property classes, and property classes can contain any properties that exist, but the visual attributes override a setting by a property class. So if you have both property class and visual attribute, and the visual attributes can also be changed um, programmatically at runtime. So a property class um, can include, it, it's, it's similar to the, uh, the visual attribute, you have a separate node in the object navigator. And a property class can be include any property. And it can be any group of properties, and you assign it a name. And then when you assign a particular object, a property class, it'll, it'll inherit all the values of all the properties in that class. So a property class does not have to be in the same form that it's applied to. And a property classes can actually have triggers and can include trigger code. And when you work through the lab, and when you see the demonstration, you'll see how those are applied. It's, it's pretty simple. Now, an object group, this is another um, way of reusing items. And what this does is, uh, if you have created a, uh, I, mean, I talked about this before. This is something that comes in the forms demos, uh, which is like a calendar form where you select the date, and it returns the value of that date, and you can use it to go through, to navigate through different months. Now, there's a whole bunch of different objects that you need for that, canvases, triggers, all kinds of things. Now, if you want to make use of that from one um, form to the next, what you can also do is group them all together in something called an object group, and you will we'll see uh, through the, the lab and the demo how to create an object group. And that will create a container for all of those objects. So it's basically a package of related objects. And it enables you to copy them or subclass them into another module. And basically what you do is, let's say you, do, you have that calendar group of canvases, triggers, all kinds of things. You just drag that one object group into the, other, into the other new form. So you go from the, the source form to the target form. And you just drag that object group in one step. All those elements move. It's a great feature. Another thing that we have uh, in forms, which is slightly similar, is uh, an object library. Now, an object library is a file. It's an OLB file. And what it has is it has uh, an infinite number of these little tabs. What you can do is you, it's almost like um, a painter's palette or something that, you know, where the painter has is different colors, although you can think of it this way, that they're they're really more like, uh, well, maybe that's not the best example. They're completely created components of a form. 
So you, you drag them onto these tabs in the object library, and then you pull them onto the new form. So this is another way of making use of uh, reusing code. Okay, now for uh, a few more points that you need to know on an object library. Object library provides an easy method of reusing objects and enforcing standards across the entire development organization. This um, greatly facilitates rapid development. So you can create, store, maintain, distribute um, standard and reusable objects. And the more, the larger the organization you have that's developing forms, and the more organized you can be about creating these and, and organize them in a way that's known to the programmers and easy to use, then you can rapidly create applications simply by dragging and dropping all the predefined objects into your form. So you could go really fast. Um, this is good if you have a large database, lots of different tables, and you continually need to give different users access to different things or give them abilities to update stuff. You've got a standard way that you want those forms to be. You could really create a form in under an hour to give them a lot of this stuff if you just make use of objects that you've already made there. Now, object libraries are automatically reopened when you start form builders. You can associate multiple object libraries to an application. And you can create as many tabs within an object library as you want. It's just a way of, those are just like um, ways to organize the items. And then when you apply them to a new form, you just drag the objects from the library into the form module. Now, the last topic that we have here is a template form. And what a template form is, it's basically a base form that contains commonly used applications in your applications. Um, and then you would always start your new form by making a copy of the template form. You have a whole lab on that, and uh, go through that. You'll get a, a sense of how to make use of that. So what we've given you here is a lot of different tools um, that Forms has to reuse code. And you should be aware of them and design a strategy of how to make best use of them. So we're going to have a demonstration, and we'll go through subclassing items, making use of visual attributes and property classes, as well as creating an object library. You go through with the homework, and you read the, the rest of the chapter, and complete all the labs, and you'll have a, a very good handle on the fundamentals of how to reuse code.